Typically, when you build a web application, you rely heavily on a database. So therefore, you need your application to be able to create data, read the data in the database, update it if it needs to, and then delete data as well if you need to. And to do this, your application needs to somehow communicate with the database. Now, luckily, Laravel has some really easy ways to do this. Firstly, it uses something called Eloquent. Eloquent is an ORM, which stands for Object Relational Mapper. And it just it's a really easy way to, to manipulate the database in your web application. Eloquent uses something called models. Each model is essentially a representation of a table in your database. So for example, uh, the user model would be a representation of the user's table in your database. If you were to create a model called post to store, say, uh, posts in your blog, it would be a representation of the posts table in your database. When you want to create a table in your database, you would most of the time create a model and accompany it with a migration. A migration is a blueprint of the structure of the database table. So models and migrations really do come hand in hand. When you create your Laravel project for the first time, Laravel automatically is set up with a couple of things. It automatically creates a user model. So if we go to our app folder, you'll see a user.php, which is the user model. And that is a representation of the user table in your database, which right now is not even there. If we go to database and go to migrations, you'll also see there's a user's table uh, migration, and that is connected with the user model. So a migration is a blueprint of a table in your database. It allows you to structure the database table however you like. So for example, in the user's migration, we have right now name, email, verified at, password, all that sort of stuff. And that's how the database table is going to look. So you'll also notice there is a password resets table. And that's something that comes with Laravel as well with its inbuilt password reset functionality. In this series though, we're not going to be using the inbuilt authentication system. We're going to create one on our own. You'll see how easy it is to do and it's better to do it that way because it gives you full control over how authentication works very simply. So to get started with our first migration, we're firstly going to edit the user migration, migrate it, which is essentially creating the table in the database. And then we're going to create another table to show you how to create one from scratch. Looking at the migration here, we want to change a couple of things. Firstly, we're going to get rid of this email verified at. What email verified at is Laravel's inbuilt functionality to verify emails when they sign up. Keeping things simple, we're just going to take that away. We're also going to take away remember token. And we're going to add in, we're going to change the name to first name or F name. And then we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it and then change this to last name. So therefore we have the first name and the last name of the user stored in separate fields in the database. You'll notice also that there is a specific, uh, well, it, there's a function. This is called string. Uh, this is called timestamps. This is called big increments. There's a lot of these different options. And these are the way, obviously, you structure the data. This is how you structure the data. So you could make this a string, which is basically varchar or uh, variable character in MySQL. Um, but the best way to, to look at uh, what functions there are for the different types of data that you can store in the database would be to go to the Laravel website and look at the migration information. So if you go to the Laravel documentation, scroll down, you'll see all the different types of data storage uh, settings that you can do. So in our case, we're just using string. So if we look for string, you'll see that it's a varchar equivalent column with optional length. So you can actually add an extra argument for the length or the maximum amount of characters. You've also got text uh, and there's, a, there's heaps. So I would recommend looking at this to see uh, the different types of data you can store. So looking at this, we're doing first name, which is a string, last name, which is a string, email, which is unique. So that's another feature which will automatically make sure that this particular field needs to be unique. If someone creates an email or a user with which, which 
uh, the email that already exists to someone else, it will actually uh, bring back an error. And also the password is stored as a string. You can always make a field not be required. So all of these are actually required. If you try and create a table, uh, sorry, a row in your database with uh, uh, the last name missing right now, then it will actually throw back an error. So we need to make it nullable. So that means that you can create a user in the database. They don't need to have a last name and it will still save and that's fine. But I'll take away nullable for now. Okay, so we've uh, got first name, last name, email, password, um, and we have the timestamps function, which basically adds in the created at and the updated at fields to your, oh, sorry, columns to your table. I'm gonna save that now, and I'm going to delete this passwords one as well. We don't need that. So basically we have a user model and a migration associated with it. So to migrate our migration over to our database, we need to use something called Artisan. I'll get more in depth with what Artisan is later down the track. However, just for now, Artisan is a command line interface, which just makes it much easier in Laravel to create models, create migrations, all that sort of stuff. So let's go to our, right click on our product, uh, our project uh, root folder. So in this case, it's app and we will open the terminal. And if you don't have open terminal, just make sure that you go into command prompt, go to this particular location and then do PHP artisan migrate. What's going to happen is artisan is gonna check your migrations folder. It's going to grab the user's migration, make sure it doesn't exist. And then it's gonna create that table inside your database. So if we go to PHP my admin now and refresh the page, you'll notice that now we have the users table and the migrations table. The migrations table is there so that it tracks what has already been migrated and what hasn't. So that's standard. Now, if we go into users and we're like, oh, I forgot, I wanna add some, I wanna add another column in there. I wanna call it notes, for example. What you could do is you could go into the migration again and add another line. So let's just do table and we'll make it uh, text. So, uh, and then we'll call it uh, notes and we'll make it nullable. So it, notes don't have to be added if they don't need to. We'll save that. And first thing we wanna do is we wanna do PHP artisan roll uh, migrate colon roll back. And that's gonna roll back the changes we did. So if we refresh now, you should see that users are no longer there. So if we then go back into artisan and do PHP artisan migrate, it's going to bring the users table back in there with the latest settings. So if we refresh that, users are there. Now, one thing you've got to be mindful of is if you're actively working in this and um, you need you have data already in the table, if you roll back, it's going to delete all that data. So just be careful there. So now, as you can see, we have a users table and we have uh, the migration has already uh, has been migrated. So let's create another table in our database. Let's just say in our database, we want to store blog posts, okay? So first thing we wanna do is we wanna create a title for a blog post. We wanna store the content as well for that blog post. And we also want to link it to a user. So what we can do is we can use artisan again. So we just need to type PHP artisan make colon model, and we'll call it, uh, we'll call it post. Now, as you can see, I'm not doing posts, plural, I'm just doing post. The reason why we do that is uh, that's just the, the standard way to create a model in Laravel. And when you create a, mo a migration associated with the model, it's automatically going to make it a plural. So we're gonna create the post model and then we're gonna do hyphen M and that will create a migration associated with the model as well. So if you press enter, you'll notice it's created the model and the migration. And you should see now we have the post model and the post migration. Now you don't have to do anything with these right now, but these will be handy later down the track when we wanna create relationships between certain models. So for example, if you wanted to do a relationship between a post and a user, well, we do that in the models, okay? So let's go back to our post migration and let's set up the database structure. So let's just say we wanna have a title. So we'll do table string title 
and we also want to do table text actually we'll do medium text because if you use a text field and your content is longer than the maximum amount you can store in a text field then it's just going to cut it off so make it medium text and that will make sure that all the post information won't get cut off it obviously uh, relies on how much content you're typing into your uh, post however medium text should cover most of the time so we'll do medium text and we'll just call that uh, content we'll also do uh, a, a column so that we can relate the post to a user so we'll do table and the standard way to do it would be to do a an integer and then do user id so user would be the model name so the, the model name is user and then underscore id which is the unique id for that specific user so now that we have we have a title content um, for the post and a user id you'll also notice you have an id which is automatically being created when you create the migration and that's something you need to leave there because each post needs to have its own unique id in the system Timestamps are there again, and that is something that's automatically created for create at and updated at. So you can just leave that like that. And let's migrate that over. So let's just do PHP artisan migrate. Fantastic. So if we go into our database and hit refresh, you should see now we have the posts table, which has title, content, user ID, created at, updated at. So now we have created two tables. We've got the users table and the post table. Now let's get into controllers and how we can actually start showing data from our database in our Laravel web application.